Hello everyone, this is Shamrock from Basic to Final, and today we're going to talk about a script called DCS to GPS. DCS to GPS is a script that allows us to export position and AHARS information to iPads and Android tablets for use in popular EFB apps like Flight Plan Go, Garmin Pilot, and ForeFlight. Having this function is mainly useful for aircraft like the F5 or the UH-1 Huey, where you don't have GPS or other advanced navigation systems in them. So having this allows us to still navigate using what would be GPS. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the how to install it. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is locate our save games folder. And then if you have DCS without the open beta, you would just see DCS here. But because I'm running open beta, this is what my folder looks like. We can just go ahead and double click there. If you don't already have other mods installed, you might be missing the scripts folder here. Uh, I already had Simple Radio installed, so this was already here, but if you don't have it, no big deal. You can just right click, make a new folder, and name it Scripts. Now that we're in here, you can see, of course, Simple Radio uh, and also this export.lua file. It's important that we do not overwrite this file with the one that comes with DCS to GPS, as it will break compatibility with Simple Radio. First, what we're going to want to do here is pull up our DCS to GPS zip file. You can find this in the description below. It'll be a direct download link from uh, the post on Eagle Dynamics. Uh, so we'll just go here and first thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and copy and paste DCS NMEA.lua. And then we will go back and we will pull in, or correction, we will open export.lua. Uh, depending on the version of DCS that you're running, you're gonna want either of these two lines here. So if you're running open beta, it would take this one like I am. I'll just go ahead and copy that. Uh, if you're not running open beta, if you're on the stable branch, you would take this line here. Um, also as a note, you don't have to be using Adobe Dreamweaver to do this. Um, Notepad will work just fine, but I use Dreamweaver for other things and this is what was installed so it was useful to me. We'll go ahead and pull up the export that Lua now that was in our DCS folder. And you'll see this line here that pertains to Simple Radio. What we'll do, and it's very important that you do it in this order, you must go ahead and add a line behind the simple radio line, and this is where we can paste in the DCS NMEA.lua reference here. If you do this after the simple radio line, it will not work. So now that we're done here, we can just go ahead and save this one, and I'll close these two out now. And I'll go ahead and minimize Dreamweaver, and now we need to open up DCS NMEA.lua go ahead and bring that up in Dreamweaver and if we scroll down a little bit you'll see configuration and end of configuration this is where we're going to be operating uh, over here we see AHARS UDP and NMEA UDP so let's go ahead and set those to one NMEA serial allows you to use either a physical serial port on your computer or a serial over Bluetooth I can't think of a purpose for this um, in any normal use of this um, script so I won't be covering that but if you guys do have any useful uh, reasons to have that then let me know in the description I'd be interested to hear them um, now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to pull the IP address of our iPad or Android tablet uh, I'll go ahead and show you how to do it on an iPad since it's the same across all of them I can't show you on Android because not only do I not own one but all the different versions of Android and all the different devices that are out there there might be a little bit of a difference uh, so if you do have an Android tablet and you're trying to do this, um, if you don't know, already know how to, I recommend that you go online and uh, figure out how to find your local IP address. Alright, now that we have our local IP address, I'm just going to go ahead and type it in here. So in my case, it's going to be n.0.1.54. And let's go ahead and copy it, paste it in. And now we are all done with this file. One thing to note, if you have a personal hotspot through like your um, cell phone, for example, this probably won't work for you. And the reason why is because phones are not routers, uh, even in personal hotspot mode. And so the devices that are connected to the phone can't actually talk to each other. In order for this to work, your computer needs to be able to talk to your tablet directly. 
Uh, if you're using like a MiFi hotspot or something like that, one that's meant to be more of a base station, uh, then you should be okay, but I can't speak for all of them. Okay, now that we're done editing all of our files and we've got everything set up, we can just go ahead and open up DCS and see what the results are. I'll see you there. All right, now that we're in DCS, we can see here on the iPad that we've got our location overlaid at Nellis. Uh, we'll go ahead and delete this flight plan for now. Clear that. Uh, you can see that four flights generous and overlays us a nice little taxi diagram. Um, if you're using Garmin Pilot, you would refer to this as safe taxi. Uh, what's cool is we can also go ahead and just go to a taxi diagram right there and then pull up the FAA airport diagram. Now we can see our aircraft on the ground there. To show that this is working, we'll go ahead and just move the aircraft forward to touch the game. See that as we're moving the airplane comes up. See that there's also a track vector and now as we start to turn on to the taxiway you can see that the track vector moves and our airplane's on turning on. Go ahead and stop the aircraft now. A couple other useful features, um, you want to do, for example, an ILS approach like you were seeing in the previous video. What's cool is we can go over here to flight plan, and let's say I wanted to go to uh, Silver Botanipa, I could put ENX. Go ahead and return, and we can see that the approach plate's already up. I'll go ahead and hide it just to show you how to bring it on there. Um, but if we go to procedure here, we go to approach into TNX, and we do the ILS runway 32 approach, head to route. You can see it automatically brings up the uh, approach chart. Also, it throws in the waypoints for us automatically along the final approach path. And of course, like any FAA chart, we have the frequency, the approach course, runway information, airport information, uh, all the great things that the FAA charts have on them. And then if we pull up our flight plan page here, what I will typically do is go over to my nav log. I'll click on the initial waypoint in the approach, just hit direct to, and now that paints us a nice direct line so that we can go ahead and navigate to that initial approach fix before picking up the ILS on our instruments. Uh, so as you can see, it's a very useful tool to have, particularly when flying on the Nevada map, um, but also when you're trying to navigate around the Caucasus um, or even the Persian Gulf maps because the GPS information is still there. So you can still set up different waypoints and all that. And, you know, again, if you're flying a Huey or an F5E, you can still kind of navigate around with that. So it's pretty nice to have. Otherwise, though, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, the download link for the program is in the description if you want to get this yourself. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and happy flying.